In my previous video, I compared the Sky RC NC2500 Pro with my other chargers. And today I thought I'd take a bit of a close look at the charger. Starting off with the external components. On the back, there's a, a socket for the 12 volt DC input. There's also a data port, uh, USB-C, and I wasn't sure what that was at first, but apparently you can update the firmware in this, a bit more about that later. On the front is a USB socket, so you can charge devices. That's not something that really interests me. And there's also this motor break-in port, which is something else I'm not really interested in. But if you're into remote control models and you need to break in electric motors, that will be useful. Then we've got the six slots that accommodate AA and AAA batteries. And there's a display. This rotary dial is to select various options. And there's a button to stop operations or go back in the menu. On the top are six LEDs, one for each slot. And when I plug in the power, what should happen is it should do like an internal diagnostic test. And those, those LEDs should flash red and green to make sure it's working okay. Green, red, then off. When I put in the batteries, if the battery is put in the correct way and there's good contact, the LED should glow orange. Let's give that a try. One, two, three. They've got a nice firm positive action when you put them in. When the charger is charging, the LEDs flash green. When it's discharging, they flash red. When the operation is complete, they go solid green. And if there's a problem, they go solid red. With the charger turned on, let's look at a few of the menu options. If we go down to battery meter, I've got three batteries in at the moment, and it shows the voltage and the internal resistance. And you can see that the middle battery has got quite a high internal resistance, 164 milliohms compared to 16 and 19 milliohms. So what I might do later is try to repair that battery to see if I can improve its health a little bit. Let's go down to system setting. Um, you can't actually turn the backlight off. It's either on or you can make it turn off after a, a set number of minutes. So I'll just leave it on. You can probably hear the charger beeping. You can turn that sound on or off. The unit of temperature can be changed from centigrade to Fahrenheit. I'll just leave that on centigrade. Temperature, I'm not sure, the manual doesn't, doesn't say anything. I assume it, it's when, the, when a battery goes above the set temperature, it just turns the charger off just to prevent damage. The default seems to be 60, so I'm just gonna leave that on 60. Now, firmware update. We've already seen the, the USB-C uh, data port for this, but um, I'm not quite sure how to do it, and if I click on firmware update it, it doesn't do anything so i assume i probably need to um, download an app to my computer and also the latest firmware file and then connect the two but um, I'm, I'm not sure how to do it and i'm not particularly worried about firmware now default setting i assume that if you change the settings and you want to go back to all the defaults you just click this but it do doesn't seem to be doing anything and System info, it shows that um, I'm on hardware version 1.02 and firmware 1.26. Now I think that's the, the latest firmware version. Let's go back again. USB power. Again, I, I'm having to make a lot of assumptions here because the, the manual doesn't, uh, is, is, doesn't give you every piece of information. But I'm, I'm assuming this, this is the, the power that comes out of the USB port at the front. And again, when I, if I try to adjust something, it's not doing anything. It, it maybe needs something to be connected to that USB port. 
this is something that doesn't really um, bother me. It's not something I plan to use, uh, as is motor run. Um, I, I'm not going to be using the, the motor break-in facility, but if you, if you have remote control models, you may want to use that battery meter with SANE. And then the, the remaining four are just the, the standard options for a, a charger. And the only thing with this charger, it, it gives more options. There are more, more parameters than my other chargers. And these things are, have left me a bit confused at the moment. I, I need to find out some more. So if we, if we go into charge, uh, you set the charge current as you do with other chargers. Uh, with my Lito, Carla and Vapcell, it will do that automatically. With the PowerX, you, you have to set it manually and you, you have to set it manually too with the Sky RC. Uh, but the, the user guide gives you some guidance on how to do that based on the capacity of the battery. So I'm just gonna leave, leave this at 900 um, milliamps at the moment. Delta Peak is something I, I don't really understand. Um, I, I think it's to do with uh, preventing overcharging of batteries uh, but I don't know what's to set it so the uh, it's in millivolts the default is five I'm just gonna leave it at five because I, I really don't know what I'm doing uh, same with voltage limit uh, the default is off or you can change it to a a voltage and again I, I just haven't got the the knowledge to, to know what I'm doing with that parameter so I'm gonna leave it off and timer, uh, it's off at the moment. I, from, the, from the user manual, it seems to indicate that if there's a fault with the charger, uh, that may cause uh, the batteries to be overcharged. So you can set a timer limit so that it will, the charger will turn off after a fixed time to prevent damaging the batteries. Okay, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, again, I'm not really sure what I'm doing, so I'm just gonna leave it off. And trickle current. Um, I assume that this is like a, a trickle charger on a car, that you know, once you charge your battery, you just leave it on trickle charge to keep the battery topped up. Um, again, I'm not really sure, and I, I'm not sure what the, the setting should be. The, the default is a 35 milliamps, so I'm just gonna leave it there. And step charge <laughs> once again this is not something that i i really know anything about um but if you if you turn it on you get three steps one two and three and for each one you you can set the the current and the um i think, I think just the current but the the user manual warns about this it says you know you use this with caution and only use it if you really know what you're doing. And that doesn't apply to me. I just don't have the, the, the knowledge to, to set this up properly. So I'm just going, to, just going to go in and turn that off. So that, so that start. So with, with my other chargers, um, you, you, when you're charging, you just set the charge current with the Sky RC, you set the charge current and there are several other parameters. And if you have the knowledge, yep, I'm sure it, you, know, you can do a better job with this charger. If you don't have the knowledge, like me, just, just leave, leave them at the defaults. So we'll go back uh, to discharge. And once again, with my other chargers, when you're doing discharge, you just set a discharge current. With the Sky RC, there's also a cutoff value. And once again, I'm not sure what that should be. The, the default is 0.9 uh, volts, and you can change it if you want, but um, I'm not sure you know, what's set it at, so I'm just gonna leave it at the default. And I, I will set the, the discharge current based on the uh, capacity of the battery. I'll look, look in the user guide and see what it recommends, to, you know, to, to what current it recommends to use for a certain capacity of battery. Uh, back again, refresh. So what, what the book says about refresh is that you should refresh batteries that you haven't used between um, 
to two weeks and three months. So what it does, it, it charges the battery, then it does a, a full discharge, and on that discharge cycle, it, it tells you the capacity of the battery. And in, in between each charge and discharge cycle, there is a rest time. And on the other charges, you, you can't change that rest time. On the Sky RC, you, you can. So I, th I think on the PowerX, the rest time is one hour. So on, on the Sky RC, the rest time is uh, 30 minutes default, and you can change that to, to whatever you want. So you just, you just set up the, the, the charge and discharge currents according to the capacity of the, ba the capacity of the battery. It will tell you what to set in the manual. So it will charge, rest, discharge, rest, and then charge again. So it, it's ready, for, so the batteries are ready for use. And the default is just to do one cycle. So you do a charge, discharge, charge. If you want to, you can do more. You can do more cycles. Uh, two cycles, three cycles, as, as many as you want. Uh, normally with mother chargers, when I'm doing a refresh and analyze, I just do one cycle, and that's what I'll continue doing with this guy I'll see. And then break-in. Uh, break-in is similar to refresh. That it, it does uh, charge, discharge, and charge cycles, but it uses a lot lower current because the, the lower current is more effective uh, breaking in or repairing batteries. So all you do, you just put in the uh, the capacity of the battery in each slot, and then that will select a, a, a very low current for charge and discharge, and it will do charge and dis discharge cycles to try to break in or repair the battery. And because it is a very low current, that can take quite a long time. It takes like, you know, 49, or 50, 50 hours. So uh, that's about it, really. As I said in the previous video, I didn't study electronics and I'm not a genius with these kind of things, but I hope that overview was useful. If you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll try to find an answer. On the other hand, if you do have knowledge of these things and can help me understand things like delta peak and voltage limit and trickle current and step charge, I, I would really appreciate it. It's always nice when I can improve my knowledge with the help of other people. Okay, thank you for watching.